What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Gains Podcast. I'm Amber P. I'm Alexis Adams. Today, well, we're going to do a little update because Alexis has something to tell everybody. You want to do that first? Sure. Okay. So, I mean, it's an update per the podcast because if you guys watch my keep up with my Instagram, you know that we are like 18 days out. Um, so I'm doing another show. We are going to Prague. So a whole lot of firsts. And I have really been diligent on trying to vlog better. Um, I know I've told you guys 8 million times that I'm going to vlog and then you don't see any videos because I get overwhelmed. So like I'll either be in a bad mood and I don't feel like it's, it takes a lot of effort. And then I've gotten into the times where I'm like, I don't really know what to record because things are like, I do the same thing every day. So, um, I've been just trying to like, not think about it and just video when I like, when it seems like I should probably video it, whether it feels normal to me or not. Um, but especially with like, I've never, the only countries I've been to are Mexico and Canada. So if they're not connected to us, I've not been there. (laughs) Um, I've never been on a flight longer than five hours. This will be much longer than that. Um, I've never been to Europe. We're actually going to go to a couple different places. I honestly don't know my geography, so I don't know. We're going to Vienna, Mm -hmm. which is Austria. So that's its own country. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to Prague, which is in the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, we are, I'm 99% sure we're going to, um, Italy in Rome, um, So a whole lot of places that I don't speak their language. Um, But I've been like, I put up a question box. You guys actually were very helpful um, because I didn't realize. So I knew and I didn't know that like everywhere doesn't use the same plugins. So I need like adapters, which when it was brought to my attention, I was like, oh, yes, I kind of knew that. Like I've, I've been aware of that before, but I definitely didn't have it on my packing list. So um put it in the Amazon cart. And then another person posted, make sure that I have one that like converts the wattage, which I didn't know. So I went in and then like reassessed my buggy. (laughs) So um, I'm going to order all that stuff this upcoming week. Um, So you guys have been really helpful with that because like Google didn't tell me some of the important things like pickpocketers are, a very large thing over there. So like make sure my bag zips. Um, so like I'll wear a crossbody that's in front of me that zips up. So it'll be harder to steal from me. Um, yeah, like certain things like that. So it'll be definitely interesting and I want to document it because y'all, I didn't even know. So let me tell you the story. So I told you guys going into the Olympia, that was the last show and that was not a lie. I was not like, hiding anything from y'all that was that was my plan (laughs) and then after finals I hadn't even like got my lashes off and boss was like what do you guys think about Prague and I was like you can ask me next Wednesday because I'm not interested in that right now (laughs) when Alexis said I'm not interested in that right now like she that means that's her nice way of saying leave me to (laughs) FLO well and like I, so you guys know that boss is autistic. So I don't want to like, if he doesn't understand something, he'll be like, what? And then I need to be in the right mindset to be grilled. So I just was quiet at first. And Martin was like, yeah. And I was like, those kind of eyes, like, shut up. And (laughs) so he was like, okay, we'll decide next week. So we did the fun, like Olympia stuff with our friends, went out to eat, did the celebrating of both my day and his day and all that. And then like, once we got home and settled and I like, I told him Amber immediately, I was like, this is what boss wants. <laughs> and, and they were all like, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But if you do like, you should do it. Cause it's Europe. Like when do you get to go to Europe to compete? It's not like a, plo- that, a show that we would necessarily plan in a regular season, you know, like if there's a Miami show or a Europe show, it's less stress and hassle and everything to go two hours down the road. So like it's, it's an, it's an experience option that 
is silly to turn down. So that's ultimately the decision that I came to. And I'm like, it would be different if I was still working in the hospital, but I'm not. So I like, am I tired? Yeah. Am I so tired that I shouldn't do the show? No. Um, And so it came down to like, I wanted to be in this position a year ago, you know, like I wanted to be where I'm doing bodybuilding as a living and for fun. And that is what this is. So um, Martin and I are both going. And if you've seen, if you pay attention to Instagram at all, Chris Bumstead is also making his um, open debut as a pro. Um, Because if if you know his backstory, he actually won his pro card in open and then switched to classic. So he hasn't competed in an open pro show. So he's going to do that. No He's not unretiring, really. He's just doing one show yeah. as for fun, yeah. Um, which is cool because Martin and he have been training together um, the last several weeks, and like some going into the Olympia. So, like they're buddies now, so they'll get to compete together, and then Martin will get to compete with him at his last show ever. Um, so that'll be cool. And then like Sean Clarita is doing it, so it's it's kind of before I didn't know any of this when I decided that I was going to do it. But now it's turned into like this really cool experience that I would have been kicking myself now if I had said no three weeks ago, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So um, we leave on the 10th is our flight. We have two layovers. So um, we will fly from Orlando to Toronto and then from Toronto to Frankfurt Oh, okay. And that'll be the longest leg. That's like 10 hours. Mm -hmm. And then a short flight to Vienna. So um, we'll get to Vienna on the 11th, but, or I think the 11th, but like 9.45 a.m. their time because they're six hours ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that's on like a Monday. And then... We will go from Vienna to Prague, which is only like an hour flight on like the 14th. And then Martin competes the 16th and the 17th because they split the men into a two day show. And then I compete the 17th. Um, The downside is my Eastern people or they're five hours ahead. So prejudging starts at like 930 in the morning their time. That's like 430 in the morning Eastern time. And then if you are on the Pacific, it's one thirty. So you can watch finals at a convenient, normal people time. Um, if you're a crazy person and want to watch prejudging, yeah. you get bonus points. I'll send you a shirt or something. Um, unless like 50 of you, then I don't have 50 shirts. But <laughs> if you are awake at 4.30 and watching prejudging and tag me, I'll send you a posing shirt. How about that? Um, Otherwise, I'll obviously be posting on my story. Um, I don't know any other wellness pros that are competing. Um, I know very few European wellness pros. And the ones that I know that compete at the Olympia are done with their seasons. So it'll be interesting to see. Like, I'll definitely get to meet new people because I don't anticipate it being a small show. I just don't know the names, if that makes sense. Like, I just don't know the girls or I don't follow them or they haven't tagged anything. Mm -hmm. Um, So it'll be interesting to see. But, like, um, the promoter already knows that we are competing. So, like, if they've – you'll see on their page that, like, the athletes that they know are competing, they've helped promote them as well. So, like, they've posted me and, like, Martin, Sean, Chris – the horse MD guy, which is an open guy. Um, It's just like confirmed athlete. So like they are doing a very good promotion of their show, which is pretty cool. Um, The prize money is increased for them. So that's why it was like very enticing for us to go. Um, You guys know that the men make more than the girls. So wellness is like the normal amount, but um, instead of like the minimum 10,000 that the guys make, it's like a hundred. No, 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 no. I lied. I lied. I lied. I'm getting shows confused. The Pittsburgh is a hundred. I think there is 30. So it's still crazy way more than the minimum. 
Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, so, listen, I'll take a 30K, no problem. He, he right, <laughs> right. And like, I don't think that, and I don't, like, maybe I'm biased a little bit, um, but I also think like by bodybuilding criteria, I don't think Martin will not, I think Martin will beat Chris. Um, so that'll be cool to like, yeah. it's the only open show he's going to do. So, yeah, um, absolutely. and then like I compete Saturday, so I will have a VIP pass so I can watch Martin. Like I can watch the whole prejudging situation Friday night or Saturday night. I compete Sunday. Wait. You said Saturday. Okay. I, I don't know where I got. I was Sorry. Saying. I was backwards. I compete the 17th on a Sunday. Okay, I was like, wait, yes. what? Gotcha, gotcha. I'm literally setting my alarm right now. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So it'll be like early Sunday morning for you. I got you. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, I have a red suit from Krista that will eventually make it to stage, but not at this one because the background's red. So <laughs> um, I think because it's red and black background so I even considered doing a different colored suit but you guys know that like my other ones are like magenta slash I thought was purple um and then the pink Arnold one but those I think with the red background and like my skin tones I think it'll blend too much so probably the blue suit but Amber and I, I know my hair straight right now but um Amber and I have game planned how to do my curls myself um, I do kind of want to change my look somehow and the suit's not going to be it. So we've changed, we've talked about adjusting my makeup look a little bit. Um, and tentatively shooting to do curls on stage. So, um, that'll be cool. And it'll be just a different set of photos to have from a show day. And I've also mm -hmm. never done four shows in a season. So a whole lot of first oh. experiences. Yeah. I've only ever done three max. Okay. Excellent. That's good. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. And then the soft plan is if I were to qualify at Prague, probably a long off season after that. Because ultimately, um, I can't grow a significant amount of glute muscle without a decent amount of time in the off season. So that's what we're shooting for. It's a beautiful plan. What a great way to end the season too. That's dope. Yeah, and it's like we'll get back right before Thanksgiving. We'll actually get back Thanksgiving week. Um, so I need to do a little bit of, like, I've been kind of working on a list of things I need to get ahead of time. Like, I need to get the turkey because oh, I can't get back Monday and get the turkey. It'll be, it won't be it will be thawed in time um, and have our friend that's going to watch Callie take the turkey out. But they're coming to Thanksgiving, so it's in their best interest to, <laughs> to yeah. thaw the turkey. <laughs> you want to eat <laughs> yeah. um and then we're already like working on travel for after that like already events that martin's booked for and stuff so it'll be call me the travel queen at this point um eventually i will get a this is how i pack stuff video up i have one from before the olympia and i just haven't edited it so if i can get my life together i've got a couple youtubes coming to you guys <laughs> All good. We're patient. We're just <laughs> they're in the camera. I just need to That's roll them up right. into a nice ball and stick them on there. <laughs> That's battle. That's dope. Awesome. 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 All right. So for today's episode, y'all, we're going to talk about coaching specifically. What is a coach? I know Alexis and I have been chatting a lot about this, but this is something that I noticed probably about three years ago where I feel a lot of athletes just don't quite understand what a coach's job is or is not. So let's start off first with what a coach is not. <laughs> so um, I think it's very important and this is something I've learned through my experience as well. Um, but your coach is a guide. They are not there to hold your hand. They cannot do the work for you. And I feel like part of where this um, topic stemmed from is 
if you guys follow bodybuilding, you've seen all the drama that has occurred on Instagram in the last two weeks since the Olympia involving different athletes, different coaches, just nonsense. And it's like, yes, when you're so immersed, it's easy to get caught up in like what's going on with so-and-so and and like your top athletes and stuff. Um, And in some instances, like we put our heart and soul into this sport. So it's easy to start pointing fingers. Um, And I think it's important to know that a coach and an athlete are a team. So when something doesn't go right, sometimes it is the coach's fault, Mm -hmm. but the majority of the time, it's a combination because while there are some coaches that are like my way or the highway or you beat it, listen to me and I'm not going to give you explanation. That is not a way to go. Um, most of the time there's like a miscommunication or a misunderstanding or the client thought you were saying this, but really you were saying this or the client wasn't sure about something and didn't ask a question or didn't give feedback. So the coach can't adjust things appropriately. Um, Or it's the client expected way more than what's realistic. So when you see clients pointing fingers or coaches pointing fingers, take it with a grain of salt because there's always three sides to a story. Um, And it's not even a lot of times nobody's lying. It's just their perspective of how they see things. Mm -hmm. So you can be incorrect, but correct at the same time as how you're perceiving it might not actually be how it is, but you can't necessarily change what your feelings are on it still. So um, I think like we kind of, Amber and I were having a like venting session and we were like, this will be a good um, topic because you need realistic expectations for yourself and for your coach. And I think that's what makes the best team and the best outcome. Cause ultimately a coach is using their experience to give you an educated guess, both on the experience of your body and the experience of how science works and the experience of what the judges want and putting it all into a pot and trying to make the best little concoction of a situation. So you can't predict the future. Coaches can't predict exactly how you're going to respond. But the more experience you have, the better you can make an educated guess. But you also need feedback. Yeah. I have the perfect example of this situation, my pro debut. So going into it, my coach is like, okay, we need to be fuller, which I agreed because I was like, you know, it, it, there's different levels to this, right? National, pro, okay, cool. So she definitely fed me more food than what I had ever had before. But again, it's just like, I don't know. I'm just going to listen. Here's where things went wrong. My coach wasn't necessarily wrong. She's looking at my body. She's assessing. But what went wrong was me not saying the day before, I feel full. Because I kept in mind, I forgot. I was like, wait a second. Well, I didn't eat this much the last time because when I felt too full, I just stopped, Mm. you know, and I didn't tell her that. And I didn't tell her going into it that, Hey, I'm feeling a little bloated. So after the fact, when I woke up the next morning, as soon as I got up, I was like, Ooh, this ain't it. I've spilled. I don't feel good. I don't feel tight. And so after the fact, could I have blamed my coach? Yeah. But guess what? How was my coach supposed to know when I didn't give her the appropriate feedback? Right. And that's a good, that's a good example of like, another thing that a lot of clients will do is take things into their own hands or do extra because they think it's better. So if you let's say your coach has you written for 30 minutes of cardio a day for like five days a week. And instead of 30 minutes, the last week you bumped it to 45 on your own because you want to get the fat off faster. Well, now your coach sees oh, she's got all this inflammation, her body's kind of stalled a little bit. Let's do a rest day and a refeed day. Mm -hmm. So they tell you to rest. Well, they're basing it off of what they think you're doing, but you've been doing 45 minutes extra. And I've had this happen where girls think it's more and they think it's better. So they just don't say anything because they're like, well, I'm doing more than what they said. So like, I'm just going to get ahead faster. No, because then what happens in this situation, as an example, 
your coach says, rest, no cardio, no training. Here's some extra carbs for the day. <laughs> so now they're really not bumping you up very much Mm-mm. because it's it's still not compensating for the extra 15 minutes you were doing on top. Or the opposite, they have you scheduled for 30 minutes a day and you're only doing 20. Yeah. So they say, rest, here's some extra food. Well, now they're accounting for what you're expending during that 30 minutes plus whatever else during your day that they told you to rest from. So they've given you this abundance way over what you needed to recover. And then it's like the next day, what they anticipated happening doesn't happen. So now they have to look at the variables and see where to assess again. They're still going to keep assessing incorrectly because they don't have the right variables. Is that like... And that's a learning curve because like sometimes like when Amber did it, she wasn't like, no. I'm going to trick Jordan, you know, it was just like, it wasn't a thought. Yeah. yeah. And then in hindsight, it's like, oh, here's where I could have been better. Mm-hmm. So that is what I'm saying when like, you have to understand that it's not a one person thing most of the time. Um, and it's really silly to point fingers unless it's absolutely 100% you were doing everything written and it just went haywire and your coach didn't listen to your feedback because like I told you guys last year, like I didn't love the way I looked at the Olympia in 2023, but I wasn't mad at my coach then because of it. Cause it was just like, it just didn't go how we thought it was going to go. Like it just wasn't, nobody dropped the ball anywhere. I was doing what was written my body was kind of responding funny and the variable choices and like order of events just didn't play out how we wanted it to. So now I know, (laughs) you know, like, okay, X, Y, Z didn't work. So I gave that to my current coach. And like, we have done that to where like, once you are to a certain experience level, it is smart for a coach to say like, what do you think about this? This is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And usually they're asking you because you know how your body has responded in the past mm-hmm. and things don't like every prep is different. Every response is different, but that is where we say it's a team sport. Yeah. So your coach is not there to get, to lead you blindly. Um, Now, I do think your very first prep ever kind of needs to be blind because you don't have, you don't have a base for data. What you are doing with your personal trainer as a lifestyle client is not really applicable um, unless you are a lifestyle client with that coach that is now taking you into a prep because they know like the variables are very similar especially if that's your end goal. Like you're starting as a lifestyle client to get used to the lifestyle and then adjust into a building or prep phase. Mm -hmm. Um, They're not the same. So you need a blind, and this is excluding PEDs because you need to be educated on that. Mm -hmm. But as far as like how much cardio you do versus how low your food gets, like all of that has, you have to do it in a prep to see where your baseline is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people fail. And that is kind of the hard part, I think, because you don't want to be in a position where you follow blindly and now like you've screwed up your hormones and like, that is, that's definitely kind of part of the risks of this sport. And that's kind of like, that's where the caution becomes hard because you do need to be cautious, but you also have to get the data. Yeah. And then like, if it's your first prep, you shouldn't even be entering into PEDs Mm -hmm. anyway. So that right there is a red flag, but I can say now there's much more information end of 2024 going into 2025 on just hormones and PEDs than it was when Alexis and I started in 2019. You were hard pressed to find any of this information. So there are things that are out there, but again, it's just like first prep, don't worry about it. First prep, you can't go off of what this one pro said, what your friend said, because you don't have any data or feedback on you. So the goal is to just make sure that you have a coach that you can trust and ask questions. Because again, 
with your first prep, yes, it's blind, but it's still a collaboration from the standpoint of if you have a question, your coach should be educating and teaching you because you're you're, you're paying them for a service. That is part of it. You want to understand because if you don't ask these questions, how are you ever going to learn and understand what's going on with your body? Yeah. So I like, I do think you need an understanding of what you're doing and why. Um, but be cautious to push back yes. unless it's truly affecting your health with the caveat that prep is not healthy. So your health is going to suffer to an extent mm -hmm. and ultimately how much is up to you. That's a personal choice. Um, and please don't think just because you're natural that your hormones or anything won't take a hit. Okay. Everyone's hormones take a hit. If you're natural, they take more of a hit. Harder. <laughs> um, which is why if you're natural, you need a much longer recovery and growth phase. So not that you can't do it that way. The mm -hmm. process is just different um, and should be different. So if you're natural and you're doing four shows a year, every year, you are running yourself further into the ground than if you were to take PEDs. <laughs> um, so understand the risks and benefits of everything that you're doing, but also allow your coach to have the reins and drive the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, I think it's important to have appropriate boundaries with your coach. Um, I think a relationship is important. But I can tell you from personal experience, I think when you get too close, too close to a coach emotionally, sometimes it starts hindering their ability to make subjective decisions. Um, and that's just human nature. And I know I have preached in the past, find a coach that you can be best friends with. I take it back. Um, not that. I regret having that experience, but I do think it can impact the decision making. Um, so when like in my coaching situation now, personally, like when I message coach, it's lit, it's just about my prep or about a show that's going on. Or I'm like, what do you think about X, Y, Z, like that kind of stuff. Um, you'll see in my YouTube and in like in Martin's YouTube, we get along really well with boss on a personal level as well, but that's the cool thing about autism <laughs> is it is very compartmentalized. And like when it comes, like when it comes to bodybuilding, boss loves it and wants to win. So he doesn't really care if you feel like crap today. If your body looks like it can handle it and you need extra cardio, you're getting extra cardio. If your body's not losing fat, he's going to drop the food and doesn't really care what your emotional response is to it mm -hmm. because this is the goal and this is how we get there. So be, I think, cautious of that line of like, you need a relationship with your coach because you do need a level of trust. You do need to be able to tell them when things are bothering you, when things are going wrong, issues with your poop that you don't necessarily want to talk to everyone about. Like you need to have some level of comfort, but you also have to understand that like you hired them and they are doing a job for you. So you need expectations for them, but you also have to respect the expectations that they have as you are a client. So I think you have like, don't forget that that is still involved. You still hired them. And they still are coaching you. They're not your best friend. Yeah. Um, obviously, I have a lot to say on this topic here. So if you've been following me, then you know my coach is Jordan Lee. And you also know that Jordan is one of my best friends. That's my dog. That's my homie. But I want to say this. We did not start out that way, nor was that my intention. I was coached by Jordan for a full year before I even allowed us to be friends. And it wasn't because like, I, I, I was just very cautious. I was just very skeptical the whole year. It's just like, I have this new coach, everything is different. And then also as someone who is in the service industry, I understand boundaries, I think at an even higher level. So I'm not going to hit you up over something stupid that I can figure out on my own. 
I'm just not. Like, we walk around with the internet in our pockets every single day. Everything is Googleable. I have friends that compete. It's just like, I- I'm not going to bother you with that. So it took us, it took me a year before I even felt comfortable, like, having that friend, friend conversation. And then once we did, it was just kind of like, oh, crap, like, we instantly connected. Now, I will say this, as time has gone on now, uh, as the deeper the friendship goes, and then just on the journey of me like being competitive, it has definitely made things very challenging. And her and I have talked about it because obviously like we talk, if not every day, every other day. So when I'm in prep and we're getting down to the wire and she FaceTimes me and she sees I look like death, Yes, we can compartmentalize, but at the same time, she's like, crap, my my friend's struggling right now, and it's because of me. That's a hard thing to wrap your head around. And then also, at the same token, this is where I struggle with being an athlete. It's kind of like, I know what's going on in her personal life. So, she don't want to bug him. I'm not, and that's why I don't, I, I don't ever bug, bug her because again, I understand that boundary. So it's just kind of like, I know she's dealing with something right now. That's really tough. I'm not feeling too hot, but I'm not going to bother her with that. So it's definitely a conversation that we have had to talk about. And so basically what I have done and what we've kind of done is just kind of like when we start, like when she's getting like really, really down to the wire and prep, we, we put some space in between it because there are some things that had popped up when she was in prep. And as a friend and an athlete, I had to speak my mind on it because I was like, okay, hold on, wait, X, Y, and Z. This is coming from one athlete to another, from friend to a friend, but also I'm going to say this, but then I'm going to step away my business, let you handle it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that. And then also like just her coaching, her coaching has switched up on me this season, which I'm glad there is very, there's, there's not much emotion anymore. Like I've said some things and she's just kind of like, yeah, so this is what we are doing. You are not quitting F and go Amber, like, come on. And she has definitely pushed me and been harder on me this off season, but in the name of being a coach, it's what's needed. My struggles aren't, oh my God, the cardio, oh, the lifting. My struggles are all in here. And so now in order for her to get in here, guess what? She's got to crack down a little bit harder on me. Was it uncomfortable at first? Yeah, but was it needed? Yes. And we just, we, we, we separate the two. Like we don't talk about our preps you know what I mean like obviously like she hit me up last week for our game plan for the rest of the season she's like hey kid this is what we're doing I need you to x y and z execute this way we're going to hold here they're going to push does that sound good to you yep sounds good okay hang that up hey sis how you doing you know what I mean now is it has it been easy to get to this point no (laughs) it has not been easy to get to this point however we have figured it out but I'm also going to say this too um a lot of girls I realize they think they're looking for a coach but they're looking for a best friend and that's also why I am very protective over Jordi and I's relationship like there have been plenty of times when Jay and I have been together and nobody knows just simply because I don't want other athletes to get the idea you know what I mean or when we were, were on the big team like I would intentionally separate myself from her because of course there's noise there's chatters oh she gets special attention no mf or i don't get special attention i do what i'm supposed to do you're just lazy you know what i mean yeah. so it, it so, makes it very, I, I have yeah. to operate differently because i don't want people to think that oh well if she's my coach i'm gonna have that same relationship i'm gonna tell you you're not <laughs> you're just not. yeah and especially like the more experienced you become really the easier it should be to coach you um, because you have that data. So you know kind of what things work, what things don't work. Every prep is going to be different adjustments, but as a whole, the trial and error, m- the majority of it is done with, and you're tweaking small things to get forward at that point. Um, so if you are on a team with another um, like equally experienced athlete, and you think they're getting treated better than you because they're moving forward faster than you, it's likely you're not executing as well as you could be. 
or they have better genetics and that is bodybuilding. Um, but the whole like special treatment, I cannot think of a coach that is like, I want this athlete to do better than this athlete. So, and if there are, it's at the smallest level. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not a worthy coach anyway. Yeah, um, also like with my, just, it's just me showing my flesh and my own ego. That pisses me off so bad because at the same time, like, hold on. So now you're trying to basically downplay all my hard work and my efforts. Yes. It's like, no, 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 no. She told me yeah. to do. I was the one that executed it. <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot of athletes also like the complaints that I've gotten in my DMs or messages that are like honestly inquiring like this is what I'm doing do you think this is too extreme yeah I think a lot of athletes don't have an understanding of how extreme this sport is it is very that is why prep is not healthy your cardio does get crazy your food gets crazy it's not sustainable at all your body hurts like oh yeah hurts. Like, I, I literally yeah. have body aches y'all yeah. yeah let me show you what I've been using It was right here. <laughs> this has been my saving grace. It helps with the body aches. It's just ascend from uprising. Yeah. It helps with the body aches and it helps with prep brain a little bit. Like it gives what you a little bit more focus. Now? It's just, it's a link. It's not a code. Oh, okay. Link. I'll add a link. Amber, Amber will put it down below. Um, <laughs> but it happens. Like when I would tell you guys that towards the end, when I was working in the hospital, I would ask for postpartum patients and not labor patients so that they weren't as high risk that it's because my brain wasn't working as well. Mm -hmm. It, it's mm -hmm. very extreme. And like I, today we're, right before this podcast, I was working on some check-ins and I have a client who she had like a fishing thing with her family this weekend. And it was really far, I think like eight hour drive. So she drove four hours, stopped, trained, drove the four, drove the rest of the way, did her thing with her family for the weekend, driving home, stopped halfway, trained, and drove the rest of the way. Wow. That is not that different from Amber and I eating meals in the bathroom in between clients and patients or like, because we yep. can't get a meal in or a break, you know, like- I've accidentally almost eaten color before because I'm mixing color and trying to eat at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> And like, and I like, I, in my response, I was like, note that this is outside of the norm. And this is very, like, this was excellent. This is you figuring out a creative way to make sure that everything gets done. Plus the things that you want to do. And mm -hmm. the majority of amateurs are not doing that. And that is what sets the amateur that's been competing for 10 years that can't get a pro card or the amateur that got it in three seasons, some of it's genetics and some of it's a lot of it is you're just not doing as much as you could be. And yeah. that's what, like some of you don't need to be because you don't love it and that's fine, yes. but yes. you can't complain either if you could be doing more. The one that I see a lot that I've seen a lot is girls just asking me like, you know, as far as like training, like this program, it hurts. And again, like I've been training for a while now, so I know my body and I understand what I need and everyone's training is very difficult. But I think what a lot of y'all have to understand is when you're first starting out and when I say first starting out, I'm talking about building the house from the ground up. You need everything, baby, buckle up. It's going to hurt. You are going to be sore. That's, that, that is the name of the game. Okay. Does it get better? I don't know if I can say it gets better. You learn how to manage it. I've I've learned how to manage it. But then also, it's just one of those things where you have to understand that this is an extreme sport and that's what it takes. And then you're also going to have to make some decisions. Like I had talked about like differences when I did my prep last season, going into my prep card getting my pro card and one of the things that I had to adjust was just talking about my whole recovery process. My coach was very straight up with me. She's like, you do not recover. Here are the options. You can take X, Y, and Z to help you with this, or we can go on like this. You're going to probably not recover and you're going to feel badly a lot of the time. So for me, that's why I made the decisions that I do with my supplementation. And I'll be the first one to tell you, first of all, am I putting that on you to tell you this is what you need to do? No, but I'm saying that because this is extreme. This is what has helped me. Do I still hurt? Yes, but that's just the name of the game. 
So if you're complaining because, oh, I, I'm hurting, it's like, you guys, I train around injuries. I have arthritis on the left side of my neck. I have a hip glitch. I have all these things. And the reason why I don't ever like to harp on those things too much is because I don't ever want anyone to think that I'm using that as an excuse. I mean, I think if you've seen any of my content and you've seen my physique, you can kind of tell that there, there's no excuses, but figure it out. If you want something bad yes. enough, you yes. figure out the train around it. That's what I've had to do. And it hurts. Yes. That's yeah. And if you're like, if you're not doing it, don't, you can't, you should put in your email to your check-ins. Like I did X, Y, Z. I did not do X, Y, Z. Cause your coach needs to know, but then yes. you can't yes. on the next line say, I'm frustrated. I don't have any progress. Yeah. Cause you didn't do X, Y, Z. Like it's, it's that part of bodybuilding is black and white. Now, if you're doing all the things and the outcome is not what we want, that's when we start changing variables. But if you're not doing the things, the outcome doesn't matter. Like falling short of this outcome, we can't tell you why, because you're not doing the things. Like, right. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I had to say in my check-in because my lower back started acting up again. And Jay straight up told me, she was like, listen, you training is not my concern. You body work, baths are my concern. You have to do those things. Those are the two things that I absolutely hate the most. I hate yes, that. What? I hate taking a bath. Absolutely despise it. I will get body work fine, but just sitting in my own gunk. And she said, she's like, I know you don't like this, but guess what? Do it anyway. It matters. It does. Um, another thing that I feel is very important, especially for the athletes who have coaches who are athletes, for the people who have top Olympian coaches as their athletes. I'm going to say this, and I mean this with love. Just because they are there does not mean that they have the recipe for you to get there. A lot of people go with top athletes as their coach because they're like, oh, wow, that means she can turn me into her. No, she cannot. I'm willing to bet you don't have your coach's genetics. I don't have my coach's genetics. Yeah. So I'm not banking on her because she's been able to get to this level that she can do the same for me athlete and coaching are two separate entities is it great to admire your coach and your coach motivates you absolutely but please do not expect that because your coach is was an athlete is an olympian that they're going to be able to provide the same thing for you no because guess what i'm willing to bet your work ethic and your time in the game ain't the same as theirs yeah and i think When you have a coach that is actively competing, I think there's benefits because we know what's going on right now. We follow it in the moment. We follow every show. But in my, like, I think we're a little bit more harsh and I'm, I'm very clear about that in my calls. Like I'm actively doing it. So I'm like, it's very in the forefront of my mind of what is necessary to succeed. So if you're not doing the things, I'm going to tell you to do the things. Like, I'm understanding because I'm also an athlete. Um, but like on my calls, I, I'm like, I'm very straightforward. I'm not going to sugarcoat things for you. I, like, you can tell me things. And if like, I will help you troubleshoot. But sometimes that troubleshoot is you're just not doing what you need to. Um, but I also think that that's a benefit because it's straightforward. So like, if your answer to that is I just can't then you just can't. But then you just understand that the outcome is not going to be what you're shooting for if you're not doing what leads to the outcome. Yeah, I definitely, I get athletes asking me about, you know, my experience as Jordan being my coach. I get athletes asking, you know, you as far as a coach. And anytime anyone asks me about Alexis or Jordan, I give it to them straight, no chaser. I tell them, if you are not serious, do not bother them. Yes, Period. but I think what I think sometimes athletes, like top athletes that are coaching, pull the athlete card way too much. Like, uh, 
you still are hired for a service. So like my athletes can tell you going into the Olympia, the girls that were scheduled for check-ins Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I moved them earlier in the week or push them to Sunday. And I gave them the option. Like you can either send your check-in Tuesday or you can send it Sunday. If you send it on Thursday, you will not get a response until Sunday. But I don't say don't check in. Now, some athletes decided that they're like, I'm deep in my off season. Do you mind if I just skip a week? That is like case by case basis. That's fine. But it's inappropriate to say nobody send check-ins until next week. Um, I don't like that personally. Um, You were like, you can, and my girls could still message me on Thursday. Like, Hey, can I do this instead of this? Or I need to adjust this. Uh, You should be able to answer. Like, that's not stressful. If it is stressful, you don't need to be coaching. Yeah, I know. I did that at Olympia and I was with Olivia. I was like, oh, I, was like, I ain't checking in. She's like, what do you mean you're not checking in? And I was like, well, um, Jay's getting ready to compete 24 hours. It can wait. <laughs> it can wait, you know. But then also that's something that I've had to learn to manage on the stage glam side. I know once I get three weeks out, I don't need to be touching anyone's hair or makeup. I love you guys, but I know that once my energy leaves my body in the middle of putting on a lash. It, yeah. Just and I do the same thing with posing. I'm like, yeah. like I had all this opening after the Olympia. Cause I was like, I'll be eating more food. I'll be more rested. And then we did out of this other show. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> pulled no, all the slots. No. You guys are like messaging me. Like I'm fitting some girls that have been with me for a while in here and there, but I'm like, if you don't see it, it's not available. Yeah, but, one of but my you don't want me like having five girls in a row because if you're the fifth girl, it's like, yeah, God bless you. <laughs> yeah. no, that's I'm not cool, useful though. to you. No, well, that's my favorite thing because like even like not even close to show sometimes just get tired. But if I am like having a moment where I'm like, ooh, I'm feeling a little flighty and I'm working, y'all are so kind because <laughs> you get yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, hey, girl, if I get, I'm just tired right now. Prep is prepping. They're like, girl, I don't care. So I, I love and appreciate that. But some coaches do like to use, you know, don't check in. Don't do this. Don't do that. And it's like, you still got a job to do, babes. Like, go compete, but yeah. you still got to do that. Yeah. So um, bodybuilding is a gray area. There's a lot of, you could do this or you could do that. Um, but hopefully this episode gives you a little understanding of like what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. Um, Have accountability. Try to figure things out on your own. It's always appropriate to ask your coach questions, but not if you can figure it out on your own. Like be, be respectful of time that you're asking questions to Like, don't be hitting your coach up at the crack of dawn. And my thing is, I don't care if you saw that they were up and they're on Instagram. Well, see, I have a different view of that. You can. I'm not going to respond until I can. Of course. If, like, because it used to be, like, if I was up at five doing my cardio, I would message Nelson because I knew his phone wasn't on sound. And I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. blah. (laughs) This is what's on my brain. Cause I knew that I would forget or I'd get at work and not be able to. So, so like, I'm totally fine with girls messaging me and we're all in different time zones too. Like my, my West coast girls will message me and sometimes I'll see it in the morning. I'm like, you were up at one o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, Oh, it was like 10 there. Um, And I'll message when I'm awake and ready to start working, but you don't get upset that your coach didn't respond to you at 1am. Yeah. (laughs) operate with the mindset of like business hours yes that's and and again a lot of that is just because for me like I've had girls messaging me about their hair at five o'clock in the morning and I'm like and don't send it this is my pet peeve but I don't like it in general clients or friends the AOL instant messaging type of some of y'all are too young to know what AOL is but when you're sending three words or less than a sentence and it's eight messages back to back within two minutes. And it's like, bing, bing, bing. If that is you and that is how you message me, you are on silent. Just know that. you. I do not get notifications from you. And I know when I open your message to be ready to read a million words. And if I open it and I'm not ready and I see a million words, I'm exiting out and putting it as unread so I can come back to it later. 
literally just send me one Bible verse. I don't mind. Get your thought out. Almost like email format as far as like put it all in one message. (laughs) No, because my brain needs space. But when you ping, 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 ping. Now, if it's like time in between and you have another question, that's fine. But like, don't say like, hey, send. Mm -hmm. How are you? I was thinking send. (laughs) Maybe I could change something about my training. Send. Yes. (laughs) I don't like lying leg curls. Send. Can I do seated send like no no don't do that <laughs> to me like this <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay so we're 50 minutes in okay so we'll maybe we'll see maybe we'll do a part two on what a coach is but I feel yeah like- if you have questions on the we'll, we put this on youtube too put their questions yeah. below and then we can go through and like make the next episode um because we we did like ping pong a little bit back and forth but i think we covered a lot of content Absolutely. So thank y'all so much for watching. Set your alarm so that way you can wake up to watch Alexis compete in freaking Prague, which is amazing. Um, the season is over, basically. Like it's it's about to be done, done. Uh what do we have? Nationals championships. I'm already booked. Um, there's nothing yet that's been out for 2025. So as soon as that schedule comes out, I will take a look at that and figure some things out. Still pose though. I need to do some posing because I just need to do some posing. So hit up Alexis for posing. She's taking lifestyle, bikini and wellness. And I think that's it. You got anything else? Nope. That's it. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening and watching. We'll talk with you next week. Bye guys.